Everyone ready to hear what God has planned for you tonight? Amen, amen. You should be ready. Okay. Anyone know what we're talking about? <clears throat> we still haven't got that loud, you know, that <clears throat> everyone's been here, but everyone know what we're talking about? Maybe I have to change. I don't want to say anyone know. I'll say probably everyone know what we're talking about. Amen, amen. What are we talking about? Dominion. We're talking about the life that God has given us, the expectation He has for us, the life that we are supposed to live, dominating life. Okay, we're not supposed to live a life, oh, just passing by, what the circumstances are telling us, or we're not just supposed to live life that, oh, wait, maybe, maybe today is a good day, tomorrow is a bad day. No, it's not supposed to. We're supposed to dominate. That means we're supposed to rule and reign. Amen? Amen. How many believe you want to rule and reign in life? Amen, amen. All right. So we've been going over a lot of things, uh, but I just want to dive right in. I believe God has a word for us tonight. <clears throat> if you've got your Bible, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay, we've read this quite a few times. Let's go through it, right? Everyone there? Let's read. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Next. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Okay? Pulling down strongholds. When we talk about strongholds, when we talk about strongholds, um, I think there's sometimes there's a notion that, you know, oh yes, maybe, you know, just God just show up tonight. God just show up with something miraculous. And, you know, I know these strongholds in my life. I know this thing, but God just, just do something and just take it away. Most of the time, that's what we imagine when we so talk about casting down and bringing down and pulling down strongholds. When we talk about pulling down strongholds, God doesn't just expect you to pull down strongholds one night. Not one day. Pulling down strongholds is about the next thing. What's next? Casting down arguments. And every high thing that tries to it's, exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So that's going to happen every day. I mean, you know that. Every time you're going to live life, every time you're going to step into the world, there are going to be arguments. And there's something that's always trying to going to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. Okay, someone's always going to try. So every time we go there, that means we are trying to pull down these strongholds. We're going to have to do it every day. It's going to be not just my one day at a time. Oh, no, no. It's going to be my daily routine, pulling down strongholds all the time. Okay, and bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's go to Psalm to 1 and verse 1. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. It says here, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. I just want you to stop there. When we talk about this, this psalm, when we talk about this, you must understand where it comes from. It comes from Solomon. It doesn't come from David. It comes from Solomon. This is the beginning of the book of Psalms, but it is where Solomon has written this. So he is writing in all his wisdom, these are the things of success. This is the way you dominate life. And the idea I want to tell you is, this is what God told me some quiet time some back, a few years back when I was asking, what, what, what do we need more? What do we need more? And he, this is what he replied. And he said, you don't need more. <clears throat> you don't need more word. Listen to this. You don't need more word. You need less noise. Every time you've been in church, you have been hearing the Word of God. How many have been here for, say, let's start, let's start more, like one year? <clears throat> one year, two years, five years, been in church. Maybe not JCLM, but anyone else. Been in church, five years, more than five years, ten years, ten years, okay. So 10 years, you've probably gone to what? How many Sundays? Nearly 48 Sundays. Let's give a month on and off. 48 Sundays by 10 years. That's 480 days. 480 days, you have heard the message at least preached to you for one hour. 
So you have more word in there than probably you have in this week. So you, what we realize is that we have all the word that God's probably telling us. Probably God has told us things over the past that he's been telling us over and over again. How many times we have gone through words and we remember, you know, someone tells, you know what, I, I just remember, this is what God told me so many years back. See, the reminders need to keep on coming. Why? Because there's so much noise. And this noise origin, is not just an idea of this world. It's the idea of the devil. Because he is here for only one purpose. How many of you know that? He's here and he's fighting you for one thing. And that is the word. When is faith? Anyone know when is faith? If I say faith, now faith. When does the devil come? <clears throat> now devil. <laughs> we know this. But we don't expect the devil to show up all the time. But in his own persistence of how much it may feel bad what to us, but you know, he is so much more persistent than we have been. He has been trying to be so persistent, even though he knows he's defeated. Even though he has lost the greatest war, even though he's lost the battles that he needs, but he's still persistent to fulfilling all his missions. He has not stopped. Because you know why? He has been preparing himself and fighting this fight that he has lost, even though he's trying to win it somehow or the other. But the Christian doesn't know what he's fighting. The Christian is missing out on what he's really after. And they are trying to portray what, what we call, you know, um, um, every possible excuse for the word not to work. We are willing to find every excuse of why we can't show up, why, why I can't believe, why, why, why I can't stand, why, 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 why this is happening in my life. We have every possible idea. See, um, I think if we go further, we probably know more. Uh, let's go to Mark, okay? Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. We'll look from verse 1. Um, how many know this? Uh, if you don't know this, the devil is a liar. Okay? The devil is a cheater. Anyone know what's a cheater? I hope you know. Uh and, he, and, and, and he's a thief. So every time the devil works, he is not operating in the way a righteous man would. The way God operates is, is uh, if I love you, I will keep showing love. The devil is not that way. He will use even looking like light to deceive you. He's not honorable in that way. Okay? So if you think he's just going to come through this door... If you, even if you've closed it, he's going to find another way. That's his whole purpose. That's how he operates. He is acting like a thief. And if, if, if you know this and understand this, if you lock your house, everything keyed up, the thief always tries to find the one way in. That's how the devil is. He's always going to find a way. And that's what he wants to do. As a Christian, we are supposed to understand that we need to be ready for this attack. Most of us know this attack is coming, but the problem is we don't prepare enough so that we can win this battle. This life of dominion, the only enemy that you have is your mind. We talked about this way back. The only reason we can't win is because we have not renewed our mind to live in this way. And the main thing is we forget that that renewal happens every day, day and night. How many of you remember that day? Day and night. Day and night, day and night. Why is that? Because your devil, the devil that you have that is trying to come against you, he's doing the same day and night, day and night. He's not taking a pause because it's Saturday night. He's not taking a pause because, oh, I've just been to church. He doesn't know how to pause. Remember this. So as believers, you can't be on pause. In fighting this battle. Okay. So look at this. Mm. This is the parable of the sower. Anyone know this parable? No one? No, no. <clears throat> Everyone know this parable? Okay, good. 
please do respond. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, so this is Jesus teaching by the sea. Everyone read. Let's say, and again he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and set it on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land was facing the sea. Next. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. A sower went out to sow. So the purpose of the sower is to remember that. Next. And as it happened, as he sowed, that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Next. Some fell by the stony ground, where it did not have much earth or soil, and, and immediately sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it caught, and because it had no root, it withered away. Next. And some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Okay, next. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Okay, is there one more? And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus is teaching about this parable, and he goes on to say this. I think we haven't got it in the scriptures, but uh, uh, he goes on to say, if you can't understand this parable, you will not be able to understand all other parables. It, show, it goes to show how much importance Jesus is putting on the word. Okay, he's, he's telling you, look, this is the whole idea. If you can understand this it's going to be, everything else is going to be easy flowing. Everything is building. This is the foundation. Once you understand this foundation, everything else is just going to be easy to build upon. Okay? So let's look at the, what, what the grounds mean. I'm not sure if we can go through all of them, but we'll, we'll see how we go. We'll look at the first one. Can we go to, yes, verse 13. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all other parables? Next. The sower sows the word. The sower sows? <clears throat> if you are in the believing lifestyle, if you are in the, what we call a believer of Jesus, Jesus expects you to be a sower. And it's not just a sower of anything else first and foremost. It's a sower of of the word. Okay, next. So this, this is the place we want to look at. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately. Satan is not waiting about when you're going to hear the word, when you're going to understand the word, when you're going to put the word, and maybe not, maybe not Sunday, but maybe Monday I'll go and attack. He's not waiting around. He's not even waiting around for you to come to Sunday morning to get that word. He has been planning and preparing all the time of how he can steal that word. Forget about the second and third ground. He is waiting on this first and foremost. The moment Jesus was, when the Father's voice came, he all, look, Satan knew that this is going to be my enemy. He was waiting for this all the time. As soon as he knew, this is my beloved son. Take him, let's go. It's time for the temptations. One after the other. Every day, every day, putting him down. Because if I can win before that seed grows up, I win. That's how the devil works. Before that word that you heard, maybe on a Sunday, night, a Sunday morning, before that word starts taking place, anything, if I can destroy this word now, that word will not have any effect. And that word, no matter how amazing it is to someone else, it will have no effect for you. Because that word has been just stolen. You know, there's, there's lots of ways the devil does this. But may, I just wanted to point out a few things of what is happening so that you may understand. Maybe, maybe you're going through it. See, I have been guilty of these things, and that is why this message has been hard for me to prepare because it has hurt me a lot. It has 
hurt me in the sense that it has been hard for me to bear. I'll be honest with you. There are certain things that, that, that God showed me that, that I felt, oh, how, how could I fall in this trap? How could, how could I miss this? See, if I, if I were to say, how many of you remember everything God has told you? How many of us do? We know our lives depend on it. We know our whole, whole system is that we're waiting for God to say something. And when God says something, maybe a month, maybe two months, maybe a year, we can't remember. Because no matter how much we valued that word before it came, it, 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 it didn't become part of us. We didn't give it time to be put in that soil. All the devil had to do is just come up and just steal it away. And no matter how much power, no matter how much, how much preparation, how much timing it was, everything was right. But it just didn't work out. You know, we, we, most of the time when we think that verse, we just think about, oh, as soon as I hear the word, the devil's going to come. You know what? The devil has been smarter over the years. He has been here longer than you, and he has been preparing all the time. The problem with us is we don't prepare all the time to fight. But he's got only one mission. He is only fighting one way. Get that word. So all he does, everything he finds, he's going to try and use it. No matter how good it has been made, he's going to try and use it so that he can just steal that word. You know, recently I was looking at this. Um, uh, there was one video out there. Um, and they were talking about how, how phones are affecting people. And uh, they were telling about how people... Uh, how people who generally, you know, have this idea, you have to take out the phone all the time. Just, just, it's just this idea that I just need to have, to, I just need to see maybe some message came, maybe something came, notification. I have been there so many times. And I know how it feels. And, and it, that, that study found out that the people, more you do this, the more people get anxious. The more people get anxious. And, and when, when people try, you know how many times, how many times we've done this. Before we go to bed, we're always on the phone. Oh, I'm just getting... Before I go to bed, I'm just relaxing myself so that I can just go through all these things on my phone so that I can relax and I can have a good night's sleep. But we don't realize that it's because we are so much, of, because we've been on that phone, our brain is trained differently. And because of that, what happens? Instead of resting, we found ourselves waking up in the morning more and more tired. More and more tired. More and more tired. And... and and another one, it found out that, you know, the, when, you, when you keep at your phone all the time, what is, what is happening is that your attention time is decreasing. So much so, some people, has, there's some of the people have attention span of only eight seconds. That means when I began the message, after eight seconds, your mind was racing somewhere else. See, we think all these things are just part of life. Let's go on. Let's, please, brother, you don't talk about the phone. It's you. Everyone has to have a phone. Everyone has to live by the phone. Everyone has to do this. You know, I, I'll tell the. I'll be honest. You know, so many times I've come to this. In the last few years, God, God has told me to shut off all the social media so I can hear him more. But in the recent years, what has happened is that where, there's a time when he says, "Okay, you go back." But what has happened is that recently when I go back, I, 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 can't, I can't stop myself. And it feels like we're addicted to it and so much so that I had to stop it all over again. Because we can't hear God. Because the main thing is that the devil knows where your weaknesses are. He knows what, what, where, where I just need to touch. He knows the places because he's been in this business of attacking you all the time. He has been preparing much more than we are preparing. So when it comes up, you know, what you do most of the time is, is, is we're so consumed by everything that when that message that needs to come, our hearts are not prepared to even take that word. Because remember, when that sower sowed the word, some seed fell on the wayside. He could have planted those seeds in good soil. It's that same seed, remember. It's not the different seed. It's not like one, one. No, I'm talking. If I say John 10, 10, John 10, 10, planted on the wayside, on the rocky stone, in the thorns, and in the good ground. And all of them probably planted by the same person sometimes. And what happens is that 
because we're not preparing our hearts to listen to what God is saying to us. And then we think, you know what? I, I, no, I come to hear God's word. I come to hear God's word all the time. I know I, I come and I listen and, I, and I'm, I, I'm here for all the time. Being there and being there are two different things. See, when, when you, that's just one I was saying. You know, one more, one more they did and they showed up. You know, how most people have made Saturday night the most relaxing time. And so much so that that's the time we probably do everything else. We do the movies, Saturday night. We have to go out for dinner, Saturday night. We have to go out and do something else. It's always Saturday night. See, we don't realize all these things. But the devil has been smarter than us. He knows, push them forward. Push them forward. As long as they can't prepare. As, it, it, they can't go early to bed. So how can they rise up in the morning with a wakened heart so that I'm going to receive my absolute truth, the life source I'm going to receive this morning? How, how can I prepare? Because I've been flooded with so much noise the previous night. Throughout the week, we've been flooded with so much. You know, if you've just sit down and just sit down in any place and realize how much more news we have, how much more information we have, and yet it seems it's crippling us as a society, as a people of believers, we are being crippled every time. When we come to church, we hear the babies crying. Our attention goes off the word and goes back to those why those babies are crying. See, there is nothing wrong in that. But, but if, if that is your tendency all the time, that means you are not engrossed in what the preacher was saying. That word wasn't enough valuable that I need to stick my eyes, my ears, my heart to what that person is saying. One little voice can take my attention away. And I just may have missed the word that was for me. Being inattentive. Being, being, you know how, how the devil can do one more thing. Um, you know, he'll put in ill feelings. You know, this person doesn't know how to preach. That's the point. point. Maybe, oh, no, no. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's someone else. He's coming in. But I've got my own routine. I only go to church on Sunday morning. I need to only go to it Sunday morning. I don't need to come in the midweek. I don't need to go and hear someone. I don't need to go and touch my Bible throughout the week. I don't need to even go out and listen to a DVD in it throughout the week. Because I get my enough word on that Sunday morning. Forgetting that that Sunday morning word will have no effect if it's not planted the next day. And the next and the next. Every day you've been fighting a battle. Fight the good fight of faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Hearing and hearing and hearing. It doesn't just come by hearing one day. This fight of faith, you know why, why it's called the greatest, that the faith you have, because that is the shield that is going to stop all those attacks. Those attacks that come from the devil, or how you're going to stop it is because you're going to raise up that shield. Most of the shield is somewhere, planted somewhere, and the people are fighting a battle somewhere else. And when those arrows stuck, brother, pastor, why did that happen to me? Why can, why can that happen to me? Where is your shield? Did you pick it up? Have you been picking up? Are you, are you preparing yourself for this attack that's coming? See, most of us don't want to do that because it takes time. Most of us want to live life the normal way and live in dominion. The dominion life is a higher life. A life that is fruitful is caused when we are not seeking the counsel of the ungodly. When that is not the path where I walk through. Where there, my resting place is not in the place where God is mocked. I am not focused on the noise. I am focused on what God is saying to me. Every day. All the time. 
you know, every time we go about going about in life, we miss about how much time we actually need to prepare. How much time we need to have ourselves to actually prepare to listen to what God is saying. So many people, this, is, this has been a study, and they say this is the number one question, how can I hear God's voice? How can I hear God's voice? And the word of the Lord is, my sheep hear my voice. I remember a few time back, uh, I saw this cartoon, and uh, the cartoon was this, God's calling on this side, and there's a sheep here, with the Bible and everything, and then he's got these headphones on. And God is shouting, calling out. But you can't hear because we've got all this noise trapped up. All these ideas of the world, all these things of I need to know. You don't need to know. The less you know, the more you can hear. The less you are... See, what did the Jesus say? Be in this world but not of this world. That means not of, that means I'm not in the routine of this world. I am not confirmed to the ways of the world. That means if, if today is the day, oh, you know what? No, 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 no. I have a plan already. I have a plan already of how I'm going to hear the word. I'm already planning myself of how I'm going to prepare my heart throughout the week so that when Sunday that comes, when that one word is planted, I know I'm going to get that harvest of the 30, the 60, the 100 fold. Because I have planned throughout the whole week of planting and preparing my heart for that word. I have not just left my heart to be roam around with any number of weeds, any number of anything, any all other seeds that anyone wants. No. My heart is what I protect. My heart is what I protect above everything else. I'm not going to be found unprepared. I'm going to be found prepared so that I can learn, I can receive that word. Just look at the good ground. Can we just go to the good ground? We'll go to the other ones later. Just go to the good ground. And uh, it's, I think, the last one is verse 20. Okay, but these are the ones, it's only on good ground. Those who... The other word, next, accept it. So many people hear the word, but hardly people accept it. How many times we sit down there, and when the pastor says, Amen, say Amen, that's the time we say Amen. How many times we are sitting down there, I know I received that word, no, that I, I say my Amen before I have been told I need to say Amen. Because it's not just something that I have to do in church, it's what I am actually believing. That's what I'm actually accepting. I'm accepting that word is mine. You know, I've, learned, I've seen this so many times, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to put anyone down, please, when I say this. I have seen so many times people, uh, when, when, when we've been in church, we are so distracted by everyone else around us. So distracted. By, by what the worship team is doing, so distracted by, by what the media team is doing, so distracted by what's happening here, what's happening there, the AC is cooling well, uh, maybe pastor is taking the remote somewhere, uh, we look at, oh, why did the blower go off? We, we're so concerned by who came in at 10.30, we're so concerned by what's happening this and that, oh, are the ushers ready, what the ushers are doing, we're so concerned of what, oh, what did that person wear? What did that person come and do? Who came? Who didn't come? We're so concerned with everything else except what we should be concerned by. And that is the word. How focused are we of getting this word in our heart? How focused are we of I need that word? Because the devil is out here. He says, I need that word. He's saying the same thing. And the fight is always about that word. The fight is always going to be about that word. And who's going to stand longer? Who's going to prepare more so that they can get that word? The devil out here is preparing how I can steal that word. He's preparing the whole week just so that how can I steal that word? And that word has no effect. How many people have noticed every time? You know, sometimes it happens. 
if this is church day, that's the day an emergency comes in. If it's church day, this is the day something happens that I just can't go. You know what you do that day? No, this is the day God has a word for me. I need to go. The devil's not going to put me down. No, he's not going to put me down. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to give you space. I am going to know because the harder you fight, that means the word that I need is here right now. That word that I need is going to be planted today. I'm going to get that word because I have been preparing the whole week for this day. I've been preparing my whole, whole moment so that I can get that one word that's going to change my life. My life is going to be changed. Because that one word has the power to produce the hundredfold harvest. That one word. That one word. How important it is. So, you know, if I had to put it, put it in work terms, say, you know, months down the line, you have this opportunity of a project that is going to change your whole financial lifestyle. That's going to take you up, not where you are right now, probably about 10 or 100 times down of what you need to be. How much are you going to prepare for that moment? You know what, 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 what the devil does? You know what he does? Look at this, what he does. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Think about this. You are people here. That was Jesus. The devil didn't leave him. He had tempted him 40 days, but he didn't. What he said, I'm just going away so that I can find another better time. A better time so that I can attack him more. A better time to put him down. He has been waiting so much. You, you think he just left Jesus for three years? No, he didn't. Every moment, one gap, one opportunity. Get me in. I can get that word out. If I can steal the word from him, I can steal the word from my whole generation. Most of us don't believe that, that we can impact our communities, we can impact our societies. No, we, 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 talk, we can't even understand how God is going to use me to change the lives of hundreds and thousands around me. But God says, it's one word. What are you doing enough? How diligent are you to plan that one word? How much are you going to prepare life for that one word? How much are you going to go out and, and no, no, this thought, no, no, I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time. Mine, my, no, I don't need this in my mind right now. All this noise that it here, no, no, I'm just going to clear out the clutter. I'm going to put it away. I need to, if, I, if I need to off the phone, I'm going to off the phone. If I need to shut down the computer, it's just going to shut down. If I don't need the TV, it's going to throw out of my life. I don't need these people in my life. This is not the way. No, no. I'm going to throw out all this noise because there is a voice that I need to hear. There is a voice that I need to live by. There is a word out there right for me. See, it's good to say good words. It, it's good. I know that, you know, it's what we call, um, um, you know, it's Christianese to say the words, oh, beautiful words. God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave. But how, how, do, how much do we feel that he gave? How much is it that we gave? Because, because if we are really saying, you know, you know, God gave his son for the world. What am I doing about this world then? This God that loves so much the world that he gave himself up. What am I doing about them? Am I just leaving them on the side? Am I just saying, oh no, it's all about me. No, no, no. I, if my life settles, then maybe someone else I'll try. Why are we waiting? Because that word, no matter how good it sounds, no matter how many times we've heard it, it has to become life and it has to be planted in the good soil because every other soil produces zero fruit. Not one, not some, zero fruit. If you want the word of God to have any effect, any good thing in your life, you have to do the same thing. The 30 and the 100 fold come the same way. And even the one fold comes the same way. If you want that one, you have to prepare ahead. You have to prepare your life, your lifestyle. 
you know, I had a, I just remembered one thing. You know, sometimes we think our eating habits don't matter. We think that what we eat doesn't matter. The way we live doesn't matter. You know, everything the devil is trying so that he can put you down. Because if I call one of you and say, you know what, I need you to walk today and preach this gospel out there so many kilometers away. How many will reach there? Forget about preaching the word. How many will reach there? Because we're not training our bodies to do that. We're not, we're not preparing our body. We, we will put anything and everything in our body. Because some of the times we can't even walk two streets away to preach the word because we can't walk that much. We haven't prepared our bodies to even walk that much. We, we can't understand. You know, I've put so much sugars in my body that I can't even stay awake so much. That I need another, another what we call that, energy drink. I need, I need another, another soft drink. I, I need another shot of sugar just to keep awake. We don't realize what's, what, what we're doing with our bodies. We're filling with so much junk. See, all this, why is it always, remember this, if you want to understand this. It's always easier to do the wrong. It's always easier to plant the weeds because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to plant weeds. They just show up. It's easier to find junk food because it just shows up. You go every corner, you'll find it. If you try, it's going to take you harder to go away from it. But that's the truth because whatever's always there, what's always easier, what's always the what we call, you know, the cheaper option may not always be the right option. Because at the end, who's winning? At the end, there's only one fight, and that is for the word. And if he can keep you, the devil can keep you out of the word with food, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll find any temptation to keep you out of the word. That's all he does. And that's all he, that's all he always will do. What did he give Jesus the temptation? What he actually came for. What he actually came for. Here, bow down to me. I'll give you all these kingdoms, everything and everything. That's what he came back to get. Wasn't it? He? he came back to get the keys. He came back to get the kingdom. And uh, that's the very temptation, but always with a plan. He knows exactly, and he will always try to find out. I'm not saying he is superior. I'm just saying he is well prepared. And he is persistent. You need to start getting there. Because you have a greater power source. You have a greater power. You have a greater life source. You have the word that is what? Anyone know what the word is? In <clears throat> incorruptible seed. You know what that means? This seed has absolute power and nothing can corrupt that seed. That means if I plant it in the right soil, I am guaranteed to get a harvest. Absolutely guaranteed to get a harvest. So the only thing, the problem is the soil. Where am I planting it? Where are my results? Where is my fruit? Where is my fruit? Where is my abundance of those, of those fruits that I need to have? See, I'm not, I, I don't want to make you feel guilty that you, maybe you've been not doing this. I'm not making you feel it because I, I know what it feels like because I have been there in the same place. I know what it feels like missing. You know, God, God tells you, oh yeah, I want you to preach on this this week. And then two days later, you forget. Because you were so consumed by everything else. It, it, it's easy to do that. But we need to start training ourselves as warriors, as people who are going to fight a battle and start trying to discipline our lives so that we can fight a battle. Everyone is called to fight. Where, 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 whatever you are, you are a mother, you're called to fight. You, you're a child, you're called to fight. You, you're a student, you're called to fight. You call, no matter who you are, a father, anyone, whatever you are, God says, pick up your armor and fight this battle of faith. Because that's all the battle there is. The devil doesn't care if you're a two-year-old, a five-year-old, a 20-year-old, a 50-year-old, or an 80-year-old. 
He doesn't work by the system. Remember that. He is a cheater. He is a thief. So he'll try. He'll try everything in the book. If he can start planting the wrong seeds right at the bottom, he knows he's done most of the work already done. But you know, so many people, even in old age, cannot forgive, cannot, because that's what has been planted over and over and over. And he knows how to get it out. He knows the right thing and the right thing to do. Can you have someone on the keyboard? You know, it, it's been hard. I know there's, I know we haven't even talked about the other grounds. I know we haven't. But I just wanted you to understand this, that this is the first and foremost thing. The second ground, the third ground, this, I, I call it the second step and the third step don't matter. The first challenge is the hardest. And that's where we need to fight, start winning. If we can start winning the first one, then we can start thinking about the second and the third one. The first battle is immediate. Satan comes now. For so many of you, as you go out of that door, maybe some of you don't go out of that door. You'll probably start getting, losing. Start, you, you know what it'll do? Talk about this, talk about that, talk about this, everything else except what you just heard. And as soon as you go down the steps, you forgot which scripture we're talking about, what was the word, what was the most important. We just, we just were blank. By the time we reach home, we are already thinking about what we're going to eat. Because the main thing has to come back to the main thing. And that needs preparation. That takes time of putting the soil, getting it ready. The farmer takes, it takes him time over months and months just preparing that soil so that when the right time comes, I can plant that seed. Everyone is waiting for that opportunate time. The devil is waiting for a right time. I want to tell you, you always have a right time coming your way. Because that's a good God we serve. That's how beautiful and amazing he is. He's not looking and saying, you know what? Oh, all these seeds you put in the past, no, no, I have to still bring it to others. No, he says, if you just say, we can declare crop failure right now over every bad seed. We don't need to harvest some seeds. There are certain seeds in our life that we know we've planted. We look back and we feel so guilty. You know, I want to tell you, encourage you, you don't need to have a harvest of every seed. You can go to a good father that we have and say, Father, by your power, I repent. Take this away. I don't want these seeds bringing harvest. I'm going to change now. Not today. Now. I'm going to start preparing now. For the next time I'm going to hear a word, I know my heart is ready to receive it, to accept it. And that word I know in my mind already, I know I have said it. As soon as I plant it, I am looking for my harvest. I'm looking for my harvest so that that word is going to change my life. My life may look upside down right now. And, you, and I know sometimes we think, you know, my life is so messed up. How can one word change it? My finances are so haywire. I don't need a word. I need a million dollars to solve it. It just seems that way. But I want to tell you, every problem God has solved throughout the Bible, He has spoken, it has happened, and it has changed. The God that we serve doesn't work in transactions of money only. He doesn't say, okay, here's the money. Next, let's change this. No. He works by the word. That's his principle. I will speak it. You take that word. You hold it. You plant it. I'll make sure I'm the God of harvest who will bring it to pass. Just focus on the soil. Just focus on your heart. Because out of the abundance of your heart, that's where the word speaks. That's where life or death is coming out. Out of the abundance of your heart. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. And Father, I know sometimes it feels like this has been a big pruning. I know so many times, even as I'm preaching, I remember I, I know so many things I've done my, on my own, myself, Lord. 
so many things I'm reminded of, of how I, I miss preparing, how I miss getting that word in my heart, how I miss of the opportunity to know the power of your word. I don't want to do it anymore. I can't go back and change those times, but I can change today. You've given me this opportunity today. You've made me hear this word today. I'm going to focus on you. It's not about the noise around me. It's not the sounds that, that, that happen around me. No, I'm hearing your voice now. Because that's what you said. Those who have an ear to hear, let them hear. I have an ear and I yearn to hear, Lord. My intention is to hear you. So let me hear, Father. What do you say to me? Oh, yes, Lord. Right now, Father, you're saying that every person here, if you've planted seeds and, and you want to repent, I want you to, I want you to pray with me and I will, will pray this. Father, I come to you. I, Father, I raise my hand. I, I, I declare, yes, I missed this, Mark. I declare, you, I, yes, Father, I missed it. I, I wasn't faithful in preparing myself. I wasn't faithful to, to receiving that word as the value of what it is. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it. And I missed and I planted it on the wayside. I planted the good word that you gave me on the wayside. And the birds came and stole it. Father, I know I've planted things in my heart right now that need uprooting, changing, breaking apart, mystifying, and, and, and changing a total. Yes, Father, like David says, create in me a new heart because he understood where the problem was, Lord. Father, I declare right now, I repent. And because I repent, Father, I declare a crop failure of every ill seed, every seed that is not producing fruit in my life or whatsoever that is not in the right direction, Father. I declare a crop failure. And Father, by the blood, I plead that blood that cleanses me and makes me whole. I want you to see that. See that with your eyes. As even if your eyes are closed, see that with your eyes that you can see every seed. Seems like a tree, seems like a plant. Every tree going away. Every bad seed going away. As it goes away, you may see that the soil feels dusty. The soil feels, feels broken down. The soil feels not ready. Now you come in. Now you need to till the land. You need to work on that soil. Some places you need the water of the Holy Spirit. Some places you need the word to work through the soil, breaking those, those big chunks and making them they, they, they are beautiful, the rich, rich soil. Some of you will need hands to get dirty so that you can put down and mash those things up. Some of you will need to walk through the paces so that you can sweat those things out. In everything, do one thing. What Jesus said, if you can understand this parable, you'll understand everything else. Prepare your heart for that one word. Father, that's what I do. Father, I look to you. Father, I know there are temptations coming my way. That seems that my mind's going to race away or something whatsoever. Father, I, I may be have I have may I have been addicted to things, Lord, that are destroying my mind. That even though they were looking like good things, Father, maybe I've been addicted to things that I don't need in my life. Maybe, maybe the good things have become such an addiction that they become noise. Father, may I not find noise, but I hear your voice. May I come to you more. May I learn of you more. 
I understand who you are in my life. Father, I love you and I know you love me much more. May that love spread joy in my heart right now. You look into my heart, you know the intent. Father, if there is needs of any changing, I allow you, Lord, to prune, to disciple, to bring through, because I want to live a life dominating, Lord. Not on the low, not beneath, above only, above only, above only, never beneath. Thank you, Father. I want to give this opportunity to anyone who has been listening and, and you're saying, yes, I need some change in my life. I know this, but I want to tell you that there's only one way you can come in. Your hope doesn't lie just in this word. The word declares Jesus is the word. If you don't have that supreme word in your life, if you don't have Jesus in your life, all that we talk about, nothing works. Jesus is the whole source. Jesus is the author, the finisher of faith. This is, Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. I want to give you this opportunity. You want to say, I, I believe that. I want to know. I want to understand. And I want to receive this Jesus that you talk about. So let's pray. Let's believe that. Let's, let's receive him. Just as we said, let's accept him. And we'll together, we'll pray with you. Let's declare, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus who died and rose again the third day for the forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life to follow you and serve you from this day forth. I ask you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to fill me and guide me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you're watching us and, and you've prayed the prayer, we want to welcome you into the family. We want to welcome you in this place we call home. Please do contact us. Please do find us so that we can know you and show you and live this journey with Jesus. Hallelujah.